Byline Times have done a very interesting article about the Channel 4 expose, about the Channel 4 programme that caught out Reform UK and identified at least one, uh, well, quite a, quite a number of canvassers who were spouting bile. Uh, one of them, Andrew Parker, may or may not be an actor. He may or may not be a member of Reform UK. But Farage's response is simply to say, well, he's just an actor and he, I don't know him. But uh, his evasive uh, approach to distancing himself from the programme is interesting. And he comes out with two completely different storylines about when he met this man. But more than that, what I find so fascinating is the people who have left comments below in uh, YouTube here, uh, those people who clearly support Reform UK would have nothing to do with uh, even countenancing the possibility that there's a problem. Those people who don't support Reform UK uh, <laughs> aren't remotely interested either. And they think, well, it's just what it is. It's what it is. It's what we expected. What I find so fascinating about that programme and partly what uh, the Byline Times seems to conclude is that the programme had very little impact. Uh, it didn't stir or change the attitudes of the people who count of the voters because those attitudes are already entrenched and people don't seem to be looking at information and those people who don't like it will say well you, we need more evidence those people who do like it will say well, you know why did you bother why did you bother with all this why are you wasting your time we know actually we don't know and that's the fundamental problem the article in Byline Times, and I recommend that you have a look at it because it, 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 it's, it's a good piece of journalism. It's a good article. Uh, it, it talks... Uh, I, think it, I think it makes about f five major points. First of all, it says... That it talks about the polarised reactions. Um, the reporters of reform dismissed the expose as a fix, while the opponents regard it as confirmation of their expectations. There isn't a middle ground at all. It, I, I find I find this absolutely fascinating, and uh, it's rather nice to have it to have my um, thoughts confirmed in print. The second point is Farage's comments, uh, particularly his description of the offensive remarks as uh, just the sort of thing that ordinary folk would say. This is his routine response, and the statement can be seen. Uh, in itself as a dog whistle, subtly endorsing the sentiments expressed by the party members while publicly denouncing individuals who got caught. Farage's attempt to normalise such comments um, by attributing them to ordinary people is particularly concerning. And, 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 and again, I think that's a brilliant observation. The third point is about minorities, and the article emphasises the fear and the alienation felt by minority groups across the UK in response to this rhetoric. The normalisation of racism and of homophobia and of racist and homophobic comments under the guise of being the representative of ordinary people is deeply troubling and it must concern as it has real consequences for social cohesion in the UK and the safety of minority communities, whether these are minority communities defined by race, by colour, by creed, um, by action. It doesn't make any difference. Number four is the media's role. And the article uh, criticises the established media, the mainstream media, for failing to hold Farage to account. It's something that I've um, pointed out again and again, that when people are now interviewing politicians and interviewing Farage, they throw out their question, and there's a sort of tick box answer, and then they go on to the next question. They don't follow up with the obvious questions that need to be asked. And I don't understand why this approach to journalism, why journalism has become so sloppy. Is it because Laura Quensberg is heading, is, is seen as the queen of 
uh, interview interviewers in mainstream media because, you know, she isn't up to it. She isn't up to it. And there doesn't seem to be anybody uh, who is capable of pressing forward and uh, the, the sort of in-depth interview that responds to the questions which are actually being placed. Even Nick Robinson fails to do this and failed. Um, Nick Robinson and um, Trevor Phillips are, are the two which I thought I, I was holding out hope for those two. And both of them failed to follow up their questioning when they were talking to Nigel Farage. Byline Times argues that a more challenging and thorough journalistic approach is necessary to expose and to counteract the normalization of hate speech and divisive rhetoric and the sort of ghosting of reality. No, number five is the political consequences, the broader impact of this. And the article highlights the potential long-term uh, effect of normalizing extremism in politics. And there's a warning that if mainstream politicians like Keir Starmer fail to deliver on their promises, there will be a shift towards more extreme and possibly fascistic elements in British politics, as, for example, in politics um, across the EU. It's not enough simply to do the rhetoric. You have to follow up with reality. And rhetoric without reality, in other words, what we've seen from Starmer, uh, from Sunak is a disaster. It doesn't work and it's not convincing, particularly after the years of Boris's deceit. Once we had once we had the evidence. So Partygate may have been a good thing for uh, for honesty and for journalism, but it was a bad thing for politics in general because it finally exposed and nailed the reality that politicians lie. Because Boris wasn't the first. And now we're expecting a standard of truth. And what we're getting, or what we've got, from Liz Truss and from Rishi Sunak is a whitewashed rhetoric which belies reality. We have a plan. What is that plan? It's just rhetoric. And if Starmer does the same, he will open the gates to the, the, the extremists who think, who, who, who have this single solution. That single solution was fair, will fail as well, by the way. That single solution is not true. But it sounds more convincing than all the evasive rhetoric, doesn't it? Overall, the Byline Times article argues that the Channel 4 expose, while it's significant, therefore, has not yet shifted public opinion significantly due to the entrenched views, due to the due, due to the election campaign, and due to the to the exhaustion that we feel because of this rhetoric reality divide. But it underscores the importance of continued, of a continued commitment to rigorous journalism, holding political figures to account and trying to prevent the normalisation of hate and division across our society.